Do you want to learn how to trade stocks and cryptocurrency? Join our community of traders. Go to richpicksdaily.com and find the next 10 bagger. Hi, how's everybody doing today? I am your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, the chairman of Snowy Owl Gold Corp, David Patterson. How are you doing today, David? Rich, I'm doing very well. Thank you. Thank, and thank you for having me on the show. Hey, my pleasure. I'm super excited to learn more about your company and have our community learn more about your company as well. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about your background, David. So I've been a fundraiser in the junior mining space for 40 years. Um, I'd say most of that uh, part of my career has been in Quebec. Uh, we have invested many millions of dollars. Uh, we made a discovery in Quebec, not far away from where the snowy property is right now, and took it all the way from uh, discovery to a producing mine. So I've, uh, I really love Quebec. Quebec is one of the jurisdictions in the world that you want to do ex exploration. I agree with you. We've actually talked to quite a few companies that are from Quebec that are doing exploration. Can you tell us a little bit about your current assets? So the current assets of the company are, are two right now. It's the Golden Eagle and Panache. So the Golden Eagle property was the one that we listed on. And it is uh, it was an unexplored area. And we thought that it had some really good potential. And then just recently, we picked up the Panache property. And now we bookend the um, what we call the urban berry structures. And we're, uh, we're both on the north and south side of it. Within say 12 to 20 kilometers, there are four mines under, uh, in, in the process of going into production. Very good, four mines, I like that. And I was just looking at some of your recent press releases. Can you talk a little bit about the Frankfurt listing and the geoscientific compilation? Well, so first of all, about the Frankfurt listing, I love um, Germany and the German investors. I've gone there many, many times. I'm, I'm guessing over my 40 year career, it's in excess of a hundred times. Wow, uh, impressive. I have, uh, I have spoken in front of two, 300 Germans at time, uh, explaining what we do in Canada, how we do exploration, and basically talking about Quebec. So I really like the German market. And I would uh, land in Amsterdam, I would rent a car, I would drive across Germany, and I would stop in these various towns that had set up a breakfast, lunch, or a dinner and speak to the German investor. That's fantastic. What background does your management team have in the precious metals industry that lends themselves to your current plan operations? So our CEO is our uh, qualified person. And it's Ray Waldichuk. Now, Ray is a, um, he's a uh, geologist. Uh, he has been with me for many years now. Uh, we're in Quebec for other projects. And uh, Ray is uh, in charge of what we do on the ground. And around Ray, we have built a technical team of consultants. And those consultants are doing the, the work right now before we get into the field. And I wanna be in the field in the next few weeks, weather permitting, and so that we can start following up on some of these things that we just mentioned in our last press release. Fantastic, and based on your background, why are your geologists so excited about these two properties? So it has been said, and it's an old adage, that if you wanna find a gold mine, stand in the shadow of a head frame. And the last discovery we made was actually between two mines. And it was an area that uh, people had said, no, nope, there's nothing there. And we, with good science and good technology, and boots on the ground, we're able to make a discovery. Uh, we see the same thing. We, I've just alluded to four uh, possible mines being in production in this area. But what we have really is 7 million ounces that have an inferred or the indicated resource categories in this area. And so if you, if you think of that adage, 
you go to where they're finding mines, that's where you'll find the next one. And really that is what has brought a lot of juniors to the uh, Abbott Tibby Greenstone Belt. It's brought the juniors here to this part of the Abbott Tibby, which is called either Windfall or the, um, or the Urban Berry uh, uh, Greenstone Belt. And where you really wanna focus along the Greenstone Belt is where you get these uh, fault zones that, are, that come through the greenstone, where you get the granitics and the, you get the, um, the volcanics. Uh, you get the right geochemistry, the right pressures and temperatures that can make a deposit. In this area, uh, from one end of the Abitibi belt to the other, there's been 170 million ounces of gold produced. Wow. That doesn't count the copper, or the zinc that's been produced in this area. So, you know, I'm, I'm excited. Um, I would hope that your investors will be excited because this, though both of our projects, the Panache and the uh, Golden Eagle, have never had any exploration done on them. Wow. In, when we look at the Panache, I think they ran, um, when I say that, never had it. I mean, using current technologies. Because in 1989, there was a small program done on the Panache and they found uh, gold bearing rocks. They found that this is what, you know, this is where you want to be looking. And then when we look down at the Golden Eagle, now this whole area has no, has had no exploration uh, except for what we did last summer. And what we see there is that uh, there's perhaps, um, it's been mislabeled by government geologists. There may be more greenstone down in our area than was ever expected. Uh, what you need, the greenstone, you need the combination of the volcanics and the granitics to create that environment for the deposition of gold. But you also need these uh, fault zones for the gold to be able to come up through. And on both properties, we have uh, unexplored fault zones. I'm not saying that any one of them would be a gold mine, but I'm saying that's where you're going to look first. I love that because we've actually interviewed quite a few companies that are mining and exploration, and they all say the same thing. It doesn't matter if it's gold, silver, oil and gas, copper. If you're surrounded or you're in areas that have done previous exploration and have had success, chances are you're going to find some resources in the ground. Now, if you're just drilling holes in areas that have never, ever, ever had any resources found in the ground, that's extremely risky. But if you're removing the risk by being in an area that's had previous discoveries, you're already reducing, in my opinion, 50% of the risk. So I really like that when I hear that because it gives me comfort because every company that I've seen that has found gold, silver, oil, copper, They've been doing it in areas where they're surrounded by other miners that have had success. So I think you're definitely on the right track. Now, what are some of the company's short and long-term goals? Well, in the next few weeks, weather permitting, we want to have boots on the ground. And that, hey. so when, when I look at, uh, as an explorer, what I look for is that we have, we start with first principles. So gather as much information on your property, and the properties that are in the area, everything that's been filed, everything you can dig up. Going back, we're looking back 40, 50, 60 years in this area, looking for hints of where people have found it in the past, bringing it closer to our properties. What have we seen? You know, we have a major company on our doorstop and with claims right within our claim block that, you know, there's, they're there for a reason. Now, we picked up all the ground around it. Uh, in the Panache, we have the two major uh, miners in the area on our north and south borders. So these are things that really speak to that. And so our first principles are gather the information, get competent, confident people to look at it. So geochemists, geo, uh, geophysicists, put the geotechs to work, figure out what does this look like? What's been... What's been overlooked in the past? And using that same principle, we made a discovery not very far away in Metogamy, and we're right between two mines. So we wanna do the same thing here. 
get on the ground, follow up these things that we have found that may not have ever been evident to anyone else and follow up on them, prioritize them, find the highest priority targets. And that's where we want to be drilling. That's huge. Now, why should investors be excited about the Golden Eagle? And you've talked a little bit about them and the Panache projects and Snowy Owl. Well, let's start with uh, the juniors that are in the area. I won't talk about the, the majors. Their market caps are measured in a billion and hundreds of millions of dollars. But the juniors in our area are ranging from about $4 million market cap up to $20 million market cap. And those are companies that actually are on our boundaries. And I'll let your, your uh, viewers do their own due diligence in finding out who those are. But it's, it will be evident from any map of the Abitibi Greenstone Belt that who these uh, juniors are. So now when you look at Snowy, we raised all of our money at five cents. We're trading, I think, right now at about six cents. So very close to what we raised our money. We raised 60% of our money from uh, either the insiders or institutional investors and 40% of the money that we raised came from retail investors. So with our market cap of 2 million, uh, boots on the ground starting in just, well, let's call it a month, uh, I think that should lead you to wanna do more due diligence to say, what, what is this compared to that? How many shares does, do these juniors have out compared to this? Snowy Owl. Snowy Owl, I believe we have 27.7 million shares out. As I said, management and institutional investors own 60% of the company. And from all of the past work I've done raising money for Quebec projects, it's been mostly institutional investors. Very good. Very good. And that's what has been where we've raised the millions of dollars that you need to raise to put one of these things into production. Now, is there any possible competitors in your area that might be looking at doing a possible takeover of your company or your project? Well, I don't like to speculate. Um, the two majors in the area have been aggressive in acquiring juniors. As they come up with uh, results, they've been snapped off the table. Wow. So the, the juniors made the discoveries and the more senior companies are going to take it through to production. Yeah, well, they're flush yeah. with cash so they can just acquire them. It makes sense. Can well, you talk, I, yeah. Sorry, can you talk a little bit about your current share structure? You mentioned a little bit and maybe how much is held by insiders, maybe yourself, if you don't mind talking about that and yeah. talk a little bit about your current shareholder base. So uh, to, to start talking about the directors, um, as chairman, I own 5% of the company and, you know, which I think is a, is a healthy percentage. Uh, the balance of our um, insiders own uh, 10%. And what we're looking at is in our institutional investors own 45% of the company. Wow. And they've, you know, they've, they've seen success before by investing in juniors at this level. And, they encouraged me to get out there and do the exploration, follow first principles. And, you know, it's the risk reward profile here is more leaning towards the reward side than the risk side. The money came in at a nickel, stock straightened at six cents. What's the best way for shareholders to get a hold of the company? Well, we have a website and that's um, Snowy Owl uh, Gold Corp. Dot com. Uh, also, if you want to contact me directly, it's uh, D Patterson. So my first name is David. So the D Patterson at bed-rock.com. Bedrock, as we all know, is where you find these deposits. Oh, this is great. I'm super excited to learn more and continue to learn about your company. Thank you for your time today, David. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. David Patterson, the chairman of Snowy Owl Gold Corp. Now, remember, Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in any companies that we feature here on Rich TV Live. 
consult a financial advisor. This is an early stage company, like David said, five, six cents. So very early stage. The upside could be tremendous. Gold is starting to come back now. We're starting to see some life in gold. Uh, today, it's having a pretty strong day. Gold's over 1800. So hopefully we're going to see gold make another run. And if we do, this could be a company that you should put on your watch list, in my opinion, and put on your radar. With the tight share structure of only 27 million shares, I would consider this undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. If you like this video, please smash the like button, comment on the video, share the video everywhere, and subscribe. If you are not winning, you're probably not watching. We bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. Thank you for joining us today, David. Thank you for watching us, everybody, and have a nice day. Thank you, Rich. Appreciate it.